<sighs> okay, so now it's starting to make more sense why I haven't really seen a lot of people talking about this show. It's all starting to click. On the YouTube or internet side of things, Loki Season 2 as a whole doesn't really fit the narrative of the now famously coined MCU, a term or idea that has admittedly been a highlight for some fans, introducing some of the MCU's now fan-favorite characters like Kamala's Miss Marvel or the highly centralized focus of Wanda's character as the Scarlet Witch in Phases 4 and 5. While at the same time, being a plague for others with Phases 4-5 through five introducing some of the worst MCU projects post-Endgame like Ant-Man Quantumania, Thor Love and Thunder, and, dare I say it, She-Hulk. And while there's an argument for both sides of the table, that'll never actually get solved because that requires critical thinking, dialogue, and conversations, which both sides are guilty of not attempting. On the other hand, when it comes to the real life side of things, you know, the people you actually interact with, it truly goes to show how a simple change in organized planning and thoughtful character writing can, one, lead fans to feeling disrespected at a franchise that they hold so dear, which of course inevitably leads to a change in fan uproar to finally evolving into fan apathy, which, as we can see with Loki Season 2, is the real death of a franchise. What I'm getting at here, if you couldn't tell by now, Loki Season 2 is peak, and an entry into this roller coaster of a franchise, brand, and universe that deserves and should be revered as one of the higher echelon projects in the MCU. And no, I'm not talking about just post Endgame. I said MCU. Loki Season 1 was already highly regarded as one of the best entries into the franchise overall even by some of the most jaded and cynical fans. And you have no idea how good it feels to say that the team behind Loki Season 2 had absolutely no problems continuing the interesting, complex, and evolving storyline, building onto the character development from the old and the new that was laid before, and what really puts a smile on my face, a show that keeps an atmosphere and tone of the high-intensity stakes that Loki and the gang are facing post-Season 1's finale. An element of writing that has really been declining, and in some cases, a non-existent factor in the majority of MCU projects post-Endgame. I mean, that introduction into Kang was dreadful. We still haven't talked about the large Australia-sized Celestial in the middle of the ocean, and I doubt we'll ever see the ramifications of a flying city-sized sky base falling out of the sky, or the fact that the majority of the first world nations in the universe have the technology to detect vibranium, Eh, fuck it. Who needs it? <sighs> Sorry. In all seriousness, Loki Season 2 was a masterclass, so while I highly recommend you go watch the show for yourself, seeing how it's only six episodes and it's actually good, let's just get into... Loki Season 2 picks up immediately following the aftermath of the events in the finale of Season 1. You know, this. <laughs> right. The plot of Loki Season 2 as a whole is a race against time, or I guess more accurately put, a race against the existence of time itself. You see, with Sylvie offing off He Who Remains at the end of time in the finale of Season 1, yes, of course, the threat of a multiversal war and the infinite amount of Kang variants showing up to destroy everything is on the horizon, it looks like specifically 2025 or 2026 our time. I don't know, Kang is still in court, so... More importantly, the Loom. A device created by He Who Remains designed as a failsafe in order to protect the sacred timeline in case he ever met his inevitable demise. You know, because there's no free will in the MCU. The problem is, the Loom is unable to hold and receive the infinite amount of branch timelines that have been created due to Sylvie's decision. With the Loom close to being overloaded, causing a complete collapse and eradication of the TVA, the branch timelines, and time itself, our characters of note are split into three factions, each fighting for drastically different outcomes. You have Loki and crew with 
newly introduced character Obi fighting and strategizing for a way to save the TVA in the branch timelines. Renslayer and Miss Minutes making their way through time as they attempt to groom a new Kang variant into repeating the same process as He Who Remains, all with the selfish intentions of rising their way to the top with him, and Sylvie, who honestly is just as unlikable as usual and just wants to destroy all Kang variants without ever using even a sliver of a brain cell. With the TVA, the branch timelines, and his friends' lives all at stake, you watch as the god of mischief goes through his greatest and quite possibly his hardest trial yet as he gains new powers, learns to use new abilities, adapts to his forever changing situation, is forced to make tough decisions, and finds his purpose in a universe and in time. I would even go to say that we watch a journey of self-discovery of what makes our Loki a Loki. It's fantastic. And I want to talk about all of the fantastic elements that this show really had going for it. So with that, let's get into... So as mentioned before, just not in great detail, Loki Season 2 is a masterclass in character writing. And it really shows the dire state that the MCU is in when it comes to the hiring of certain writers for certain projects. And while the majority of them have failed to varying degrees or have been met with lackluster fan reception, embarrassing box office numbers, and or fan backlash because it's relatively noticeable how shit and half-assed the majority of entries have been when placed beside and compared to a show and production that actually has a crew, a team, and multiple actors that actually care about their specific characters and project that they're going to be releasing to the public. And out of the majority of characters that have had a high focus on them post-Endgame like Doctor Strange, Wanda, or Spider-Man, Loki is easily the best and most cohesively developed character. For all of the people that were Loki stands from the yesteryears of the MCU, shout out to you because you're truly feasting. And not like some fan of a train wreck character who has to ingest glorified fake content that masks itself as a quality project that... You force yourself to choke down while putting on a brave smile, convincing yourself that it is good. No need for that this time around, champ. We actually got ourselves a fucking winner here. What I will say, and I got into it a little bit earlier into the video, but I'm going to dive into it a little bit more now. It's the stakes. Or the fact that there actually feels like that there are stakes here. When taking a deeper look into the majority of MCU projects post-Endgame, what started off as an innocent and formulaic machine, manifesting its shape and forging a path as one of the MCU's strongest suits, has turned into one of the MCU's greatest downfalls. Pretty much being reduced to a meme at this point, the trope of, oh, the universe is ending, oh no, it's ending again, has been played out to a point where you as a fan, an audience member, can't even take the movie or TV show being watched seriously because you know that the universe isn't going to end. This isn't Thanos. We haven't been building to anything that's substantial or no villain introduced has warranted or earned that type of stake setting. So why has Marvel decided to play out this trope so much in recent years? Who knows? But the decision to split the characters into three separate factions all with unselfish and selfish goals simultaneously, makes for great stakes. Every character has a reason and motivation to be doing what they're doing, meaning each character decision actually has a cause and effect throughout the narrative and actions that affect other characters and their choices. It's not a hard concept, and it's a shame that I'm even having to explain this to you in the most simplest of terms because it's an element of writing that has been so lacking from this studio. At the end of the day, while I'm not going to claim that Loki Season 2 is peak MCU, that's still Infinity War and Endgame no matter how many random people show up like prairie dogs to denounce those films. I can easily say that Loki Season 2 deserves more recognition throughout the community and the fandom, while personally entering the show into my A tier of MCU projects all time. It's a true return to form of what makes the MCU so great in the first place. It's characters and the stakes that were set. So again, while I highly recommend you go give this show a watch for yourself, I have to reiterate that Loki Season 2 was a masterclass. 
Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. The year is coming to an end, so keep a lookout for my top whatever videos. Best, worst, mid. I'll figure out how I'm going to structure it. But with the release of Wonka, Rebel Moon, and Aquaman 2, we're really looking at a photo finish. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you enjoyed, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.